Hyundai.com and the Adai Tano program. The all new 2018 Kona by Hyundai available at Cars Plus. IP&E fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant located in Tamuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Ahead on primetime, it's back to square one. Senators fell to get enough votes to pass a budget that would fund Gov Guam for the upcoming fiscal year. Plus, accused of trying to scam ATM users, the suspect Nicola Marinelli is back in court and is being held on cash bail. And the CLTC land scam discussion is back on. Commissioners ready to move forward with efforts to right the wrong for those skipped over on the waiting list. Half a day and good evening. Senators have rejected the fiscal year 2019 budget bill in a vote of 9 to 6. For two weeks, lawmakers have struggled to bridge a $138 million revenue shortfall created by the Trump tax reforms. But despite lengthy deliberations, they now have to come up with a new spending plan. Nestor Laconso reports. Voting against the bill were Senators Tom Anna, Frank Uggen Jr., Will Castro, Fernando Estevez, Tommy Morrison, Luis Munya, Dennis Rodriguez, Joe S. Augustine, and Therese Terlahi. Voting in favor were Benjamin Cruz, James S. Baldon, Regine Bisco-Lee, Talina Nelson, Michael Sinicholas, and Mary Torres. Senators were seeking to balance the budget with steep spending cuts and tax increases to make up for the lost revenue from federal tax reforms. They waffled over which taxes to raise, but settled on keeping the 5% business privilege tax, raising the real property tax for improvements of more than a million dollars, and bumping up the tobacco tax from $15 per 100 cigarettes to $20. Senators also went on a spending spree of $16 million in anticipated tax amnesty proceeds, but that money may not have really been available, said Speaker Cruz during Thursday's session. Though we may have wanted to appropriate, uh, depending on when this thing is signed, he could pay all the tax refunds before then and undermine all of the appropriations that we've gotten. I, and and I, th I would hope everybody understood that. The governor is on record saying any tax amnesty money should go to FY18 expenses and to deficit reduction. He also opposes another section that defunds all of his deputy director appointees. And Calvo also made clear in a past news conference that a controversial provision which guts the budgets of the governor's office, revenue tax, and the administration department and forces them to collect prior year past due taxes to fully fund their operations is an absolute non-starter. I am not going to allow the ship of state to, to go into chaos. This alone is enough to cause chaos. You can't take out a governor's office, a revenue tax, and a DOA. Everything else will follow. Failure to pass the bill means it's back to the drawing board with a new fiscal year looming on October 1st. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Senators have placed the bill back on the second reading file and decided to continue deliberations this evening. They've also called back the Revenue Tax and Administration Department directors. Meanwhile, Appropriations Chairman B.J. Cruz has stepped down as facilitator of the budget talks. He says the rejection of his bill is evidence of, quote, no confidence. Vice Chair Frank Duggan Jr. will take over his role. And Chris, we of course, will have more on the budget discussion on KUAM.com. While he was allegedly trying to cash in on ATM accounts, now Nicola Marinelli will have to put up $5,000 cash to get out of jail. The Italian national is charged in connection to two skimming devices found on Bank of Guam ATMs and could be tied to a bigger circle of criminals back home. Here's more. Nicola Marinelli back in court, this time with an Italian interpreter. <laughs> I'm sorry, what did he say? He wants to go back to Italy. Marinelli should have been homebound on Wednesday. Now his stay on Guam indefinite. Earlier this week, a vigilant Bank of Guam staffer noticed Marinelli at a Timuning restaurant and phoned police. Marinelli apparently matched the description and surveillance images released in connection to skimming devices installed on local ATMs. On Friday, he appeared before Magistrate Judge Benjamin Cison, where he was officially charged. The people of Guam is accusing you of using a skimming device. Okay, people of Guam, the person of Guam, the cousin of the Kaifatu Reato. 
as a third degree felon. Like I push what's the red or not? Marinelli had been staying in a Tumon hotel. His attorney, public defender Earl Espiritu, arguing for his release. Prosecutor Thomas Newman pushing for accommodations at the Department of Corrections. On behalf of Mr. Marinelli, I am requesting for his release on personal recognizance at this time. We understand these are serious allegations. <laughs> However, these are just allegations, and Mr. Marinelli is innocent until proven guilty. According to the People's Declaration, Mr. Marinelli made admissions to the police. That his sole purpose to be on Guam. Supposed to be in Guam. Was to commit crimes. I had to look crime in Guam. I had to was to roll it in Guam. Marinelli will have to post $5,000 to get out of jail. As reported, Marinelli was in Italy and strapped for cash when he met a man named Michelle, who convinced him to come to Guam to install skimming devices. Michelle, court documents state, might have connections to organized crime in Italy. We should note Marinelli has only been implicated in two of three skimming devices discovered on local ATMs. Back in June, a skimming device was discovered on an ATM at the Micronesia Mall food court. Surveillance footage released in that case shows a different suspect. No word yet if the two are connected. Well, housekeeping at a Tumon hotel found an apparent ice pipe with meth residue, multiple sealable plastic baggies, and digital scales inside a hotel room safe. The finding resulting in three people being placed under arrest. Jarvin Keen, Santos Farron, Audrey Nicole Tysakin, and Javon Nicole Bradbury are charged with possession of a Schedule II controlled substance, drug possession with the intent to distribute. Farron and Tyskin also charged with possession of an unregistered firearm. Court documents stating police were called after the hotel staff found the items in the room. This happening after one of the suspects had already checked out from the room before checking into another. Investigators obtaining a search warrant and the following day made the arrest. One of the suspects was caught in the hotel parking lot where authorities apparently found another glass pipe with meth residue. Police also searched the suspect's car where they found two more glass pipes and a 25 caliber pistol and unexpended rounds. He crashed and his car burned. This video was captured by a passerby at the scene along the back road to Anderson earlier this week. While the driver made it out unharmed, 30-year-old Keith Anthony Cruz is now in jail. Court documents state he was court-ordered to stay away from a woman known to him. Moments leading up to the crash, he was speeding by her, following her vehicle as she drove to work. He then crashed into the concrete pole. The victim and other drivers assisted with calling 911 and pulling him out of the car. While being treated by medics, Cruz allegedly ran after the victim but fled into the jungle when police showed up. He is charged with advanced stalking, terrorizing family violence and resisting arrest. A woman is accused of leaving the scene of the crash at first, but police later making the arrest after finding out she had apparently been drunk driving with kids inside the car. Annie Rages Albert faces multiple charges of driving while impaired with a child on board. Documents state police responded to a report of a traffic crash early this morning. The witness telling authorities the driver involved took off, but not before they got the suspect's license plate number. Investigators were able to track down that suspect. She apparently smelled of alcohol and later admitted to drinking eight beers. Her blood alcohol content more than twice the legal limit. And even more shocking, police spotting a one-year-old and three-year-old in the back seat. Now to decision 2018 news. The five gubernatorial candidates are facing off again, this time in a forum hosted by the Filipino community of Guam. Sabrina Salas Matanani is at the Hyatt Regency Guam, the venue for the event. Bree. 
Nick and Crystal, the doors have officially opened here at the ballroom. The forum is expected to get underway promptly at 7 o'clock. As you heard earlier in the newscast, there's a possibility that some candidates, gubernatorial candidates, might not be able to make it because they're stuck in a session. Those candidates, of course, being Senator Frank Uggen Jr. and Senator Dennis Rodriguez Jr. But the show must go on and still scheduled to participate in tonight's forum are Carl Gutierrez, Lulian Guerrero, and of course the lone Republican, Ray Tenorio. Joining me now is the president of the Filipino community of Guam, a good friend, Norman Analista. Tell me about the ground rules for tonight and some of the questions and issues that will be presented to the candidates. Well, Bree, we wanted to make sure that all of the candidates knew in advance what questions uh, would be asked because we wanted them to be prepared. And some of the things that we're going to ask them will uh, pertain to issues that we believe all island residents will be interested in, education, public safety, health care. And there are a few issues that we want to tackle as well, such as how do they believe uh, Filipinos in Guam could um, be included in their administration. Uh, we support the right for uh, self-determination by um, our Chamorro brothers and sisters, but we also want to know how Filipino community would fit into that discussion. We also want to find out if they support uh, a visa waiver program for travelers from the Philippines. And we also want to ask them uh, some things that um, will gauge their knowledge about Filipinos and their many contributions throughout Guam's history. Now, I understand that this is the, the first time in a long time that the Filipino community of Guam has actually hosted a forum. I think we were talking earlier, more than a decade. Mm -hmm. So what prompted you guys to decide, let's let's hold a forum this year? Well, Bree, the excitement is in the air. Um, I've, I've lived on Guam all my life, and I have to say, in recent memory, this is the first time that we've had uh, four teams running under one particular party. And in particular, there are a lot of candidates that typically pull a lot of support from the Filipino community. And it was our responsibility to ensure that our members and the community at large is kept informed about where they stand on specific issues. So now more than ever, it was very important for us to ensure that we have members who are as educated as possible. Well, thank you so much. I know you're moderating, so good yeah. luck to you thank tonight. You. Thank you. And I'll let you get to work. All right, thanks a lot. That was Norman Analista. He is the president of the Filipino community of Guam. Again, the forum gets underway at 7 o'clock uh, with all of the gubernatorial candidates, as we know right now, scheduled to participate. Don't forget, the primary election is scheduled for August 25th. The polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. Also, because it is the primary election, when you vote, do not cross over. Otherwise, this means that you vote either Democrat all the way down the ballot or Republican all the way down the ballot. If you don't, your ballot will be deemed spoiled. Reporting live from here at the Hyatt, I'm Sabrina Salas Matanani. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Bree, and thanks, Norman. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. Yeah, coming up, a live report, uh, which you just heard, and we'll have more news, of course, when KUAM returns. There are more ways to experience KUAM News than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM News app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM Radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. A simple handshake. That's all Jake Calvo needed when he started his company. Today, 80 years later, we like to say thank you to all of you who have taken our hand in trust. Thank you to the dreamers. Thank you to the realists. Thank you to the family-oriented. Thank you to the entrepreneurial. Thank you to those climbing the corporate ladder. And to the ones starting a new life together. Thank you to the traditionalists and the edgy. To the young at heart and the old souls. Thank you to the daring, to the protective, to the practical. Thank you to the hopeful, to all of you from all of us, our deepest, happiest, and infinite thanks. 80 years here for you. 80 years thanks to you. Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Our workforce is changing and our students need to be prepared for the challenges that are ahead. I graduated high school at GCC when we could learn a trade and even prepare for college. Our students deserve schools that are safe and books and resources that help prepare them for their future. A Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration will rebuild Simon Sanchez, fix our schools, 
integrate technology in the classroom, and expand access to trades. I'm in to help get us there, and we humbly ask for your vote. I'm Lily Young Guerrero, and I approve this message. Win adventure in the ITE Explore Your World Million Mile Giveaway. Every week from July 16 to November 2nd, we're giving away 60,000 United Mileage Plus miles to ITE postpaid and prepaid subscribers. Imagine where you could go. Go on a weekend getaway to the Philippines. Enjoy fresh sushi in Japan. It's a dakimas. Sip a latte at a cafe in Paris. Or use your miles for shopping and other rewards. It's your world. Explore it. Summer is here, and at Cars Plus and Mighty, that means big savings. During our summer clearance event, right now, save up to $8,000 on select 2018 Ram 1500 SLT Crew Cab, or save $3,250 on a 2018 Chrysler Pacifica. Voted Family Car of the Year. 1.99 APR financing is available for qualified buyers. Plus, buy today and receive a Cars Plus value card, where you get 21 cents off per gallon at all Shell stations. Don't miss our summer clearance event. Going on now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. Hoffaday and welcome back. Now that board chair Pika Farron is back on island, it is full steam ahead for the Chamorro Land Trust as they scrutinize a sea of leases in preparation for the upcoming board meeting. Yeah, Chris Bar as Chris Barnett reports, the board chair says she hasn't forgotten about the Barragata Heights land scam controversy that rocked the agency. The Chamar Land Trust Commission expects to take action on leases that fall into two categories created by an opinion from the Attorney General. Well, I'm hoping that we can arrive at some decisions next week as a commission. Well, the AG's opinion centered on legally defining existing leases and how illegal but accepted CLTC administrative practices affected those leases and application rights, whether or not land management employees bent the rules to award themselves and their family members with CLTC land in the prime Barragata Heights area, hasn't been overlooked by the AG and the CLTC board, according to board chair Pika Farron. I'm definitely interested in um, working, continuing to work with the attorney general um, to look into all of those allegations and figure out what happened. Land management employees have undergone ethics training, and this morning CLTC board members did the same thing. Farron saying employees will also have to come clean about their relationship with CLTC applicants, but it remains to be seen if that practice will be used moving forward or applied retroactively. We briefly talked with legal counsel about um, having him prepare an actual internal policy so that we're clear, you know, when, when is this applied. Um, so I think that's something we're going to be talking more about next week. The AG's opinion issued in May categorized CLTC leases as voidable and null and void. Leases not ratified by the board were deemed voidable but not void, and leases where applicants switched place in line and leases transferred by living applicants to another person were deemed null and void. Today, commissioners review documents prepared over the last two months. In the process of determining which leases fit into the two categories defined by the AG, the CLTC discovered hundreds of leases could be affected by the opinion. Some lessees have built homes on Chamar Land Trust lots, creating a quandary for the commission and discussion center on how to move forward with situations like this and also leases that were transferred from living applicants for what the board called legitimate reasons. Come next week, look for the board to start at the beginning with leases and applicants from 23 years ago when the Chamorro Land Trust was created back in 1995. I think that would be probably the first thing we do is look at those and um, talk about ratifying those leases so that we can move them out of the category that the AG has called um, voidable. For Guam's News Network, I'm Chris Barnett. Thanks, Chris. And she's the senator behind the charter school law. Now former Speaker Judy Wampad is taking charge of Guahan Academy Charter School. This happens as the Guahan Academy Charter School not only faces budget cuts, but still lacks accreditation. Carmen Terlahi has the story. It's been about four years since someone last took the helm as a chief administrative officer of Guam's first charter school. The last CEO of Guahan Academy was Donna Dwiggins. 
Now, former Speaker Judy Wanpat, once chair of the Education Committee, who had a direct hand in passing charter school law back in 2008, is taking lead. That will be then now my responsibility. I want to make sure if I see anything great that's happening, and even what has happened in the past, I am now going to let everybody know so that I can alleviate that fear and to let them know that, you know, we're just as good, if not better than, you know, some other schools. Wampat eager to prove charter school skeptics wrong, citing student academic success that she believes sets charter schools like GEX apart, adding her thoughts on GEX's failure to achieve accreditation within the five years required by law. I know the law is the law and they're only talking about accreditation. And they totally dismissed Dr. Sablon's evaluation of our school. And I like to just lay all the fears out there in the community that GAX has not failed in terms of its academic of teaching and learning. According to Wanpad, the primary reason for WAS withholding accreditation, quote, has to do with their facility and the fact they couldn't make payment to the owners of the building. Finance another major issue she hopes to tackle with new CFO Wilfred Afflegui, former head of GDOE who retired from the AG's office. In fact, she agrees with Superintendent Fernandez's concern. What's is about two thirds of the of the um, about one third of the of the kids I think are coming from other outside of DOE. So if a private school student goes to a charter school, you're taking money away to from this you know from our school, it shouldn't be robbing one to pay the other. All of the monies for a GDOE and a charter school all come from the general fund. So if it comes from one pot, then it would be easy for the senators then is to just de-link. Wampat optimistic her leadership will be a positive change for GAX. We have to be able to not only be held accountable because these are public monies, because we are a public school. Right. And I surely don't want to taint, you know, anything and everything that I've done in the past because of, you know, some financial, you know, problem. Cax is scheduled to start school on August 27th. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Terlahi. Well, just in time for the weekend, more refund checks are in the mail. The administration confirming $2 million in tax refunds have been sent out today. Yeah, Revan Tax printed the checks overnight. Now, this covers the error-free status day returns followed by February 14th. So, if that's you, then you may want to check those mailboxes soon. Sports is next, but first, your island weather. Make every day a plus. Our workforce is changing and our students need to be prepared for the challenges that are ahead. I graduated high school at GCC when we could learn a trade and even prepare for college. Our students deserve schools that are safe and books and resources that help prepare them for their future. A Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration will rebuild Simon Sanchez, fix our schools, integrate technology in the classroom and expand access to trades. I'm in to help get us there and we humbly ask for your vote. I'm Leon Guerrero and I approve this message.
Ready for some family summer fun? You guessed it! Sago Manyago is having their fourth annual kids carnival. Come to the Governor's Complex Lawn in Adaloop on Saturday, August 18th. The end of summer fun begins at 4 p.m. and lasts to 7 p.m. Free admission and free entertainment with children activities, music, dancing, and much more. Sago Manyago's kids carnival on August 18th at the Governor's Complex in Adaloop. Special thanks to Bank of Guam, Community First Federal Credit Union, Cattle Select Care, Addis Trust and Investment, Take Care, Stay Well, Guam Regional Medical City, Matson, and to all of our community sponsors. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. It's Friday, so you know how we do it. We're going to hit you up with your Darren's own Athlete of the Week. I have some Guam National Youth Football Federation news along with some youth basketball. Check it out. We're here at Darrenzo Mengilao for our Athlete of the Week. Today we have Josiah Quintanilla, who plays basketball for the Island Wolves. Hi, congratulations. Who would you like to donate your check to? Uh, the Faha Outlaws Youth uh, Team. You play basketball for the Island Wolves. You've been playing for three seasons with the team. Uh, what is it about the team and playing with the Wolves that you enjoy so much? That we get together a lot, uh, help each other out all the time. We're always there for each other. And... We have good chemistry, good com communication. We also uh, love each other very much. As a team, I think that we work hard together. And if it wasn't for the team, I wouldn't be who I am now. Coach Len, he, he always pushes us. And Coach Vic, he always makes us laugh. And both coaches push us a lot to where we get better. You guys are heading into this weekend's championship game undefeated. You're going to play elite gold in the championship game. How do you think you guys match up? And what are going to be some of the things that you guys are going to have to do in order for you guys to pull off the championship? Our offense and their offense are both strong. But I think we'll, we'll win this because our defense is way stronger than their offense. So our plays are very helpful for our team. I just know that we all work hard. And... I think we'll just take it. I know there's quite a few people that you want to thank and also give a shout out. Shout out to Coach Len, Coach Vic, my mom, my dad, SU, of course SU, and Isla Wolves. All right, congratulations. Stay tuned to our next Dow Rens Home Athlete of the Week. KUAM Sports Athlete of the Week is brought to you by... Close to 1,000 football players and cheerleaders will be representing their teams this season as the Guam National Youth Football Federation kicks off tomorrow. Eight teams will be stepping on the gridiron for a chance to be crowned champion in their respective division. Our biggest sponsor is Triple J. Uh, once again, they've come back year after year. Uh, hats off to them as well. All the kids, uh, and, and we can see it's a, it's a true reflection uh, as you watch the high school games now. Most of those kids that are playing high school now have actually evolved from the youth league. So it's a proof that uh, the youth league is actually helping out football in general on island. Saturday's games are as follows. The Angels take on the Packers at Angels Field. Raiders will face the Broncos at Raiders Field. On Sunday, the Steelers and Cowboys meet up at the Steelers Field. The Eagles take on the Outlaws at Eagles Field. Kickoff for each division, Mendiki Keep 9.30 in the morning. Munha, 10.30, Metgut, 12.30, and the Matua Division will kick off at 2.30 in the afternoon. Parents are out there and they're uh, interested in having any of their kids come out to, to either observe or try football for the first time or get back into football. Uh, please visit our website. It's uh, gnyff671.com uh, and all of the team's uh, information is there. And um, if, if you need to uh, call somebody, 747-3157, uh, I'll, I'll be glad to point you in the right direction. GYBA Basketball League Championship winners for this year's season. The Raiders take the U-10 division. Warriors bring home the U-12 title. U-15 Girls Division champions are the Crusaders Gray. The U-14 trophy went to the Southside United squad after they beat out the Crusaders 37-26. to Well, that's going to do it for sports. We're back right after this. Say hello to high-speed data on the widest 4G LTE network in the Marriott. We've just upped your prepaid data, so make your big plans bigger with one gigabyte of data per day. Bigger prepaid data for your big plans that just keep getting better. Enjoy high-speed data and unlimited local talk and text on the widest 4G LTE network in the Marianas. 
text LTE to 3282. Select a plan and enjoy one gigabyte of data per day. Docomo Pacific, better together. Some conditions apply. Visitors make memories on our island. They contribute millions of dollars every year to our community. So what does that mean? Tourism keeps our island's culture alive. And it strengthens our identity as Chamoru. Tourism creates opportunities for local businesses to thrive. The dishes I create feature local ingredients. These ingredients come from local farms and create local jobs for farmers like us. For every job we see in tourism, there are hundreds more we don't see. From teachers, to babysitters, to engineers, we, we all, all work, work in the tourism, tourism industry. industry. Our visitor industry benefits everyone. It improves our income and gives back to our community. Many more opportunities for a better Guam. Kids in West for Guam. Go back happy. For a limited time, receive a free $500 Kmart gift certificate on selected new vehicles from Triple J Auto Group. Get the car, the savings, and the supplies just in time for school. Top of the class deals like 2018 Mazda 3 Sport for as low as $16,995. Or our big boy truck, the Ford F-150, starting at $298 per paycheck. Or the sporty and stylish 2018 Honda HRV at only $176 per paycheck. Get pre-approved instantly at TripleJGuam.com. Trade-ins welcome. Some conditions apply. Stop by today and... Go With Triple J Auto Group. Customers first. And before we close out the newscast tonight, our latest round of birthday shout outs from the Cold Stone Crew Marie Birthday Club. Happy birthday, Ever John Lion, Ugin Floors. Happy fifth birthday from Papa Ed and Grandma Faye and family. We love you, Lion. Jay Edwards and Nicholas, happy eighth birthday, Jay Edward from the family. Peyton Jacob Akinino, happy 19th birthday, love the family. Robin Tyler Polino, wishing you a very happy birthday, love the Iglesias and Polino families. Lawrence Breton, wishing you a special man in our lives. Lawrence, Larry Breton, a happy birthday, currently lives in North Carolina, we love and miss you. And happy belated birthday to Ronnie Boy Munoz, happy 14th birthday, love your family. Also, happy belated birthday going out to Sessa Zari Hope Hikagi and Galina. Remember, you can be a part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. Please make sure to include your photo, your name, and birth date. And Nick, you know what time it is? Yep, that time Our to announce time? the winner of the yummy Cold Stone Creamery <laughs> Birthday Cake. We can't do a drum roll yeah, anymore. It's the best Happy we got. belated birthday, Isabel Guerrero. Her birthday was on August 9th. Congratulations. A rep from Cold Stone will call you on how you can redeem your yummy Cold Stone Creamery ice cream cake. Yeah, and that's going to do it for us here on Primetime. Extras up next. And just a reminder police will also be conducting DUI checkpoints along all of the island's major roadways this evening. Have a fun and safe weekend. Good night. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E. Hafa day everyone, I am Jason Salas and tonight we will tell you about keeping the spark in relationships. You're going to want to stay tuned for that. And we are back with the class of 1968 for more on their island.